The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mian Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by me and Mosin Z has garnered great reviews and even loved and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Ghost Missing by Me and Mosin Z, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be here on the Mike Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. And heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, including me and Motion's great books like um, Am- Missing Once and More, go to Amazon.com slash me and Motion Zia. Make sure you order today. And don't forget to support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, also on PayPal at the Mike Widener Show, and also the Show.com. And make sure you 
donate generously today. We're here with a terrific uh, write, aspiring writer as well, too, illustrator, and a lot more. He was born in North Dakota and raised in West Africa by missionary parents. He's currently in North Carolina right now. He's an avid reader of American and British literature, and uh, he came back to the U.S. in um, 2000 and... Um, He's also um, trying to get some uh, works published as well, too, and just has a lot of influence as well, too. And um, he, he did have he did have like what one one's path to go. But um, as as soon as he found out, he chose another path. And um, he's looking to basically, um, you know, getting some of his work as well, too. And uh, he's um, also getting his website done by our sponsor as well. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in North Carolina, the very multi-talented Author, writer, illustrator, and more, Gabe Michelson. Gabe, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on the show, Mike. Well, it's great to have you on board, too. So you're born in North Dakota, and you're raised in West Africa by missionary parents, and you came back in 2000 to the U.S., and you're an avarier of American and British literature, and uh, you also have uh, a thing called Getting Published Sucks, and um, also you, you also have your um, website done by our sponsor, uh, power by uh, Sonic Web Studios, and uh, you just have an amazing story. And before getting to all that, Gabe, tell us how I first got started. Well, I like you said, I've been a reader since I was very little. Um, started out with pretty simple picture books, just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And there's a pretty wide selection in West Africa that's different from what you might expect here. All right. uh, one of the pictures I sent you was a book labeled Sundiata. Do you remember that? Um, I'm familiar with it somewhat, yes. Tell me more about but that one, what, yes. Like what Robin Hood is to the British people and what Paul Bunyan is to the Americans, Sundiata is to it's to the Malians. He was the first warrior king, and when I was a kid, I read that book, and my parents have a copy of it still. And it was really what inspired uh, the storytelling interest that I've had. I mean, I didn't always pursue that career. In college, I studied mathematics, of all things, but... Uh, I've always been interested in reading and writing, and it really only took off once I got back to the States. Huh, that's rather interesting. And what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your life? Uh, um, when I, I told you I was taking mathematics, I wanted to be a math teacher, secondary education, so teaching high schoolers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a grueling task because you required, it requires a double major in college. But once I got into the classroom, once I started teacher aiding during my college courses, I saw how teachers are treated in this country by comparison to what I grew up with. And I knew I could never do that over the long haul. It was just too, too terrible. So I had to switch path careers. And I'd always been interested in writing, so that seemed like a, a natural follow-up. And I never anticipated how much I'd enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not published yet, I'm certainly loving every every story that I write, even if they're short stories. That, that sounds interesting, too. And um, what was life for you uh, growing up in uh, West Africa and also being uh, compared to the States? What's it like for you in West Africa? Ooh, it's, it's like a whole different world. I mean, uh, people are generally the same with regards to how they behave, what kind of lives they live. But uh, there, like, people talk about... Uh, racial minorities here in the states over there were the minority everyone everyone knows that two bobs that's what they call white people are rich and gullible and that's that's the that's the normal for them of course it's not true but um it's a stereotype that we lived with mm -hmm. and well like i mentioned schooling is different like you you walk into a school in west africa in mali specifically and it's like entering a church. It's it's a sacred space because education is so much harder to get for even young people there. Wow. They respect it a great deal more. They they revere it. And that kind of feeling was what I grew up with. That's that's what I was used to. So when I was teacher rating in here in the States, I realized that we don't have that kind of reverence here at all. Neither for teachers nor for schooling itself. So that was the that was the reason why I gave up on education. Mm -hmm. and, and in West Africa as well, too, you're saying that there's um, a select few. Is it based on um, income or race, or is it just like you have to meet all these requirements, or is it there that where anybody can join, but you have to uh, abide by a set of rules in West Africa? 
um, mostly it's availability of schools in general. Mm -hmm. Only the wealthiest people can get a can get a full education, and just like any other country, there's a disparity of wealth between the super rich and the super poor. It's just a smaller disparity because there's less wealth in that part of the world. So, if there were more teachers, if there were more schools, I'm sure there would be better education and a lot more people. And unfortunately, one of the downsides of that was that people would respect their education less, just like they do here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and then uh, what, what's the quality of education like in uh, West Africa compared to the United States? Do you think um, West Africa is uh, the same as the United States? Are they higher? Are they lower? Or where do they rank um, you know, internationally compared to the United States? Unfortunately, I'm not all that qualified to give that answer because the school I went to was filled with Americans for the most part. Um, I told you my parents are missionaries. Mm-hmm. I went to a boarding school filled with missionary kids. Oh, wow. So the educational standards were not the same as what you might expect from a local school. It was called the International Christian Academy, mm. and it's shut down now. I mean, they shut it down years ago, but the I, I didn't notice much of a difference in standards between that and when my parents were on home service and I was attending a school in the States. Oh. I mean, they spoke English, they had classes, they had grades. It was It was all pretty much the same. The only difference, uh, the only reason I know about the difference in schooling is because I went to various other classes. Not, I didn't take them, but I also spoke to the people there, mm-hmm. and I realized just how different it was for them, how much more it meant to them mm-hmm. than it did to people in the States. Okay, what kind of... Course of course, I came to that realization a bit late, but I did get it eventually. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good thing. And uh, what kind of missionary work did your uh, parents do, and how long were they... Um... You know, being on uh, on on a missionary tour before coming back to U.S. Uh, they spent several decades overseas, but uh, the typical cycle is two and a half years in Mali, and then half a year back in the States. And they they would spend that half a year um, usually uh, fundraising for the next time they went out. So they would visit churches all over the Midwest, uh, coast to coast, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, while my siblings and I would be taking classes, uh, mm-hmm. usual schooling. Okay. And then it was back for two and a half more years on the mission field. Wow, that is and, something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I was mostly done. It's just the kind of work that they did was straight up mission building. I mean, they went to a village called Gambia at first. Well, at, at first they were teaching and language learning because you can't really help these people if you can't speak the language. And um, most people in West Africa speak French as an international language, and then they have a local language. In my parents' case, it was Fulani or Pular, depending on which dialect you're talking about. They're almost the same language, but they have differences. Think um, think modern English to middle English. So you can understand some of what's being said, but certainly not everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds quite interesting, too. And, of course, you being an avid reader of um, American and British literature, we'll talk more about that along with your favorite authors and um, some upcoming works as well, too. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia molson has garnered great reviews in Evil Love and endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manilas. So grab your copy today for Goals Missing by Mia molson 
available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple Music. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise on Amazon at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Me and Molson Zia store. And also check out some great books as well. Don't forget to um, support the Mike Widener Show with your generous donation at themikewidenershow.com. Also support us on Anchor FM as well as PayPal, and make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who uh, was born in North Dakota, raised in West Africa by missionary parents, and um, came back to U.S. in 2000, ever reader of American British literature. Here on the Mike Widener Show, Gabe Michelson. And Gabe, uh, you've got... Um, some works out there. You've got four books that you put out, and you've got an amazing story about uh, some of those. And um, before getting to all that, um, who are some of your favorite authors and writers growing up? Uh, um, well, you you remember I mentioned the story Sunjata. That's more of a folktale, so there's no author listed for that. But after that, um, I really got into Richard Adams. Do you know who he is? Mm-hmm. Uh, his, his He wrote the Watership Down series, or actually just two books, really. But that really captured my imagination because I always loved animals, and we had rabbits out in the village that we that we kept for meat and for pets. Uh-huh. And uh, then there was C.S. Lewis, of course. Uh, he got me started on allegories, Christian allegories, usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I read the entire Chronicles of Narnia. Loved oh, those deeply. one of my favorites. Yes, one of my favorites. And um, hey, what, what was that other one by C.S. Lewis? Was it Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? And oh my gosh, I mean, just amazing. It's, it was really my first introduction into the fantasy ideals, getting, getting able to put out uh, your, your story using, using allegorical means, using something that isn't real as an example. And I was just a kid. Uh, I really liked The Horse and His Boy, if you remember that one. Mm-hmm. But after that, I was getting a little bit older. I was able to read the big linchpin, the one that really got me stuck on writing, later on anyway. And that was Tolkien's work. That was the Lord of the Rings books. Oh, And they wow. were huge, a massive slog to get through. But it was worth it every step of the way. Mm-hmm. And, and, so, of, and of course, with the C.S. Lewis books and also the um, J.R. Tolkien um, books as well, too, uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, movie ad- adaptations of the books? Oh, they're complicated. Um, I... I really loved the movies the first time I saw them, and my brother-in-law got me a copy of the DVDs, and I was really excited about that. Um, I don't want to get political or anything, because I have strong feelings about that, but I'm not going to inflict them on the audience here. But we, after we the Harvey Weinstein thing, um, I can't really watch that movie anymore. Mm-hmm. But I can still read the books, so I still have copies of those, and I look through them from time to time when I'm when I'm feeling down, it gives me a, a rush of nostalgia just to flip through some of them sometimes. Huh, that's rather interesting, too. And uh, what are some of your other favorite genres uh, that you enjoy reading? Well, um, after after I uh, was done with The Lord of the Rings, I actually started getting into science fiction, really. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't just fantasy anymore. Have you heard of Timothy Zahn? Timothy Zahn, I believe so. Well... He wrote uh, a series of fantasy or of sci-fi books, and he was best known, as my understanding, he is best known for his work in science in um, fan fiction in the Star Wars universe. He wrote a series of novels that really got the whole ball rolling because once he wrote those first three Star Wars novels, dozens of other authors really kicked into gear. Aaron Alston, Michael Stackpole, Barbara Hambly, tons of authors started putting in their putting their hats in the ring after. Zahn got the ball rolling with them. So he was one of my favorite authors early on. And then then I moved back to the States, and I kept on reading that sort of stuff afterwards. So it started out as Christian allegory. Actually, it started out with children's stories, then Christian allegory, then fantasy, then science fiction. And my writing has continued in that vein ever since. Huh, that's really interesting. Timothy Zahn uh, being of um, the Star Wars genre and um, of course, you know, you know, with all those Star Wars movies out there, first there was three, there was six, and then it's like, you know, so many offshoots. I'm having a hard time keeping up with. And um, do you, do you think the Star Wars uh, movies all um, 
you know, go along the same lines of the books that Timothy Zahn wrote? Or was it more uh, modernized? Was it more like, um, you know, tweaked, um, you know, wrong way? So what, what do you think the Star Wars movies were along those lines and how accurate were they with the books Timothy Zahn wrote? Oh, no, no. Um, the movies that George Lucas came out with after the fact weren't based on Timothy Zahn's work. They're completely different stories. So there's there's no comparison. It's apples and oranges. But um, I've always been a, a guy who enjoys the classics. So the original three Star Wars movies, those were the best by far. And the prequels were garbage. And most of the ones that followed up were bad, in my opinion. But that's just because I'm a purist. I'm kind of a a snob when it comes to that sort of stuff. Uh, if you want to enjoy an action movie, then by all means, watch the more recent Star Wars movies. But um, the advantage with writing is that you can cram so much more detail in. And that was what drew me to Zahn's work, because he didn't just describe the Empire and the Rebels. He didn't just describe the Force and those who didn't understand it or didn't believe in it. He went into massive detail about all of it. And his characters were involved and believable. And he, he, he had the Luke character and the Leia character and the Han character, but he also created his own. And those were the important ones. There was an assassin turned good guy named Mara, and there was a smuggler and information dealer named Talon Card. Mm. And there was the bad guy, the quintessential bad guy who's still showing up in TV shows today, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. He was this tactical genius who was laying out the good guys every time he got into a fight with them. He he was outthinking them on every level, and in the end, really the only way they beat him was just because he overlooked some small detail and made an ally who wasn't as reliable as, as he needed. And that's really the only way the good guys won. It was my it was my first exposure to a truly compelling bad guy. And I've been trying to write those kinds of bad guys into my stories ever since. Not just threatening but overwhelming and to a degree sympathetic you gotta you gotta have bad guys that are three-dimensional not just cookie cutter mustache twirling villains mm -hmm. right exactly yeah and it's totally understandable as well too and um you also have some uh four books you already complete as well too and uh tell us about those books that you had uh, written too especially your most recent one um well I kind of work on them simultaneously. Like when I when I get burned out on one book, I will switch to another until I'm ready and then start back up on the first one. But when it came to the original one, let's see, I also tried writing my own fan one, but it wasn't based on Star Wars. It was based on the Stargate universe. Have you heard of that? Stargate, yes, I do remember that. Well, this is kind of my homage to Timothy Zahn's initial work. Um, it's It's about a team. But it's not the main team. It's not SG-1. In fact, I barely include anything from the original characters. Mm -hmm. It's about a different team that's trapped off-world when something goes wrong with Earth, and they, they don't know what's happened, why they're cut off from their home planet, and they have to survive um, in a hostile galaxy filled with very dangerous, very malicious aliens. They have, to, they have to make allies, and they have to find technology, and they have to figure out what went wrong and how to go home again. It's kind of um, Castaway meets uh, meets Quantum Leap, I guess. That's one of right. the advantages mm -hmm. of the Stargate universe. You can go to different worlds with different cultures and different technologies. It's what drew me to the show originally when it started coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting as well, too. And I did uh, find them that you got Threads, you also got Code, and also Fade as well, too. So, and, and also Well, too Threads is a really big one. Okay. And maybe just um, go ahead. Okay, uh, basically, um, most of my or a lot of my stories are about isolation, separation. Um, in in Alliance, that's the Stargate one that they're cut off from Earth. But in Threads, well, there's this ancient city. It's basically set in medieval times, but with a little bit of magic put in there. I don't really include that much in the story. But there's an ancient city that's the capital of this Viseri Empire. And suddenly and inexplicably, it's cut off from the rest of the world completely. Like this enormous black barrier just completely surrounds the city. No one can get in, no one can get out, and you can't see inside either. The barrier's are opaque. So people don't understand what happened. They can't get anyone out. They can't get anyone in to find out. And because the capital city's been cut off from the rest of the world, the empire collapses in a matter of months 
while people are trying to fill the power vacuum and all that. So that's the way it stays for centuries. I mean, no one can study it because the barrier is dangerous, too. Anyone who steps inside is gone. They assume they're killed. So when the story starts a few hundred years later, someone has finally found a way through this barrier, a scholar by the name of Joss. And when this Joss person comes inside, she finds that the city is still inhabited. I mean, the descendants of the people who were stuck in the city are still there. And she finds that everything has changed. The language even has changed. She has a hard time understanding them at first. It's that whole modern English to Middle English thing. Like, you'd get some of it, but you certainly wouldn't get all of it. Right. And then she meets up with some of the people who live there, including Ariko. He's the other main character. And he's involved in a fight for freedom because a large portion of the city is basically being held in slavery of a sort. And he's trying to win them some equality, some, some representation. And he uses what she knows from the outside, and she uses what he knows from the inside. It's a whole, uh, it's not supposed to be a stereotypical white savior story where someone comes from an outside perspective and saves the day. More, someone comes from an outside perspective, and then both perspectives learn from each other, and together they can work through some very difficult odds. Her arrival changes things, but it doesn't fix things or destroy things. It's it's an involved, complicated storyline. And, it and d- I'm really proud of it because I spent a lot of time working on it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you put a lot of work into it as well, too. And, um, and, and of course, you know, you think about with uh, language and writing and everything. And um, what was an early experience where you learned that language d- indeed have power? Oh, well, that's the thing. Um, right from the beginning. I mean, before my parents went out to West Africa, they were language learning in Quebec. Mm-hmm. And... I I learned French just like all the other students up in Quebec, but uh, you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, I barely speak a few words now because everything after that point was for me in, in English. And my siblings held on to French a lot more easily than I did, but just the ability to speak something that people understand will make them so much more receptive to you, so much more understanding for your perspective. And, well, for an example, a few months ago, my parents sent me an email. They said... Uh, They said they were in North Dakota. That's one of the places that they were visiting when they got back to the Uh States. And they heard someone in a mall in North Dakota speaking Pular. And that's that's a tribal language from Mali. Really? Like, imagine the odds. And so so they they start up a conversation with this Pular speaker. Turns out he's Fulani, and his family was in Mali, and he was talking to them. And... He, the very idea that they responded to him in Pular because they definitely knew the language made all the difference. It turned it turned them from some some ordinary white people who happened to be walking through a mall in in, uh, in North Dakota into cousins or or relatives or friends. It, it the the impact of language is so much more important mm-hmm. if simply because they spoke his language mm-hmm. and. That's increasingly relevant all across the world It's in this day and age. But writing, literature, is an extension of that. And we're lucky in English because our language has been around for so long that we can be very expressive with regards to it. But how we express ourselves, how we make ourselves known, that's powerful whether you're talking to someone or whether they're reading something that you've written. And it's, it will always be that way. It's, it's kind of the core of who we are as people, really. Huh. That's rather interesting. And uh, whereabouts in North Dakota you met this uh, Pular person? Oh, I I wasn't there. This is something that I was told secondhand by my parents. But I believe it was in, uh, I think it was near Minot. I'm not sure exactly where in North Dakota they were at the time. They were visiting friends all over the state. Okay, I think it sounds like Minot as well, too. We're not too far from there. You get um, a good amount of people from Canada. You get some uh, Norwegian, some Russian, everything. So it may be cold, but it's also a really good city to visit as well, too, in Scandinavia and everything. And a very nice city, too, by the way, North Dakota. Oh, I remember. I mean, I, I barely remember going to Minot, but I grew up in several small towns. Like, basically, before my parents went out, it was Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I spent time in in Martin with my father's parents. And, yeah, blizzard cold, especially <laughs> compared to West Africa, which is 120 degrees in the shade sometimes. But the nicest people you'll ever meet, really. 
Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, you know, a lot of good people, good jobs and everything else. And, um, I mean, it's just an amazing state. you got to say that. And, of course, you're talking about with writers and everything and uh, being established. Do you think a big ego helps or hurt writers? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat that? Okay, please? I'm sorry. Does a big ego help or hurt writers? Oh, yeah. Who? Um, in my opinion, in general, yes, having a big ego is helpful to writers because that ego helps you get noticed. Like, um, you can take a risk, and because there's so much market saturation, because there are so many people putting their, their works out there, if you write something to put it bluntly, egotistical, it gets noticed. The problem is not to overplay that. You gotta, you gotta temper your ego to a small degree. Like, um, you can, you can include a certain amount of profanity if, in your story if you want to, but if all of your characters are foul-mouthed and swearing a blue streak all the time, that goes a bit beyond ego and into crassness, into, into playing yourself out sort of thing. So be bold when it comes to your plot choices. Be bold when it comes to how your characters interact with each other or their dialogue with each other. But remember not to take it too far because you don't want your characters to get played out. Right, exactly, too. And, of course, um, you, you know, being friends with writers and having a network and everything, um, they can help with your ego as well, too. They can give you some support. And um, what are some of the other authors you're friends with and how do they help you become a better writer? Well, um, when I got back to the States, uh, I was writing alone for a long time, and I didn't really, I, I'm mostly introverted as a person, so I didn't really reach out. When I did, I realized how much different it can be. I joined a writing group, and some of my friends who are still in Michigan, I lived in Michigan for a long time before I came to North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, they are still in that writing group, and I try and listen in when I can, because my schedule is so different from theirs. But uh, right. the best part about being part of a network like that is getting the outside perspective and the support you need. Because people, especially authors, need to be told when their stories are bad. Like, getting constructive criticism is the key. And the key word in that is criticism. They will criticize what you've written so that you can improve yourself. And, it, like, I won't lie, it was ego-bruising to hear that my character was one-dimensional or that my plot turn was predictable or that... Or that my story just seemed flat and needed more more dialogue, more more excitement, I guess. Uh -huh. And while it is ego bruising, it's necessary to become better. You don't you don't grow a better plant unless you do some pruning on it. That sort of idea. Hmm. So the the writers that I've associated with, and I'm not including them by name yet because they don't really want to yet. Right. But um, I'll include their names on the website once uh, once I get their permission. But they aren't published either, but they're extraordinarily useful to me because they hear me out, and I'm happy to hear them out on their writing as well. Mm -hmm. So every every aspiring writer should be part of a group like that. I can't stress that enough. Um, and, and if you could tell your younger self uh, anything, your writing self anything, what would it be? Well, if it's okay, um, I'd like to push this question to the end because it's kind of the most important. Oh, that's fine. We can do that. And uh, you, don't, you know what? We'll actually take a time out and uh, find out uh, what's coming up for uh, Gabe Michelson and more. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all you need. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of The Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson ZF Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with author Gabe Michelson. After this time out. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. 
He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody, it's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbeam, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back with author Gabe Michelson here on The Mike Wagner Show, being born in North Dakota, raised in West Africa by missionary parents, came back to the um, U.S. in 2000, and he's got some books out as well, too, and um, including um, Threads, Code, and uh, Fate as well, too. And um, also, just one thing, where can we find your books at? And which I understand, you have a website now, which can be found by going to www.gdmwriting.com. It's my understanding that the website will be once it's completed, and by the time it's broadcast, it should be up and running with everything. However, for now, I'm using a Facebook group. So if you're interested and for some reason the website is down, uh, go to Facebook and type in Getting Published Sucks, and <laughs> because it really does. And that will lead you to my group, and it will have all of the information I'm sharing so far, including a full book, Threads Part 1, uh, three short stories, and teasers and excerpts for the other books that I've written, uh, enough to get you at least a taste of what I write. And the book is for free, currently anyway. So just download it, and if you like it, share it. And if you don't, that's fine too. It's mm. not everybody's cup of tea. Right, exactly. I know exactly what you mean. And what, what else can we expect from me in 2021 and beyond, Gabe? Well, um... Uh, you mentioned Fade and Code, and they're very different than the others. They're they're modern day. They're set in current events. And one of them is modern fantasy, the idea that uh, all of the spirits, all of the ghosts and stuff that we have in our mythology are actually there. They're, they're not the they're extra-dimensional creatures that have been around for as long as humanity has. And I had a lot of fun writing that one because what if there are creatures that we can't see and they have no interest in us personally. I mean, humans are just interesting little puzzles to stare at sometimes. But right. mm-hmm. what what if what would it be like for someone, the main character in this story, suddenly becomes aware of those creatures and they become aware of that person? What what would that affect them? Would they have like if they have a reason to fear us, how would they react if the main character has a reason to fear them? So I had some fun with the modern fantasy with, with writing fade. But Code is the real science fiction one, the first one I wrote. And it deals with something that's controversial, but I think it's very important to discuss. Um, We're developing more advanced medical technology and more advanced artificial intelligence every day that we live on this Earth. What if we had ourselves an implant of sorts that regulates decision-making, not like a pacemaker that handles a heart, or uh, implant to regulate epileptic seizures in the brain, but one that actually prevents you from doing something you know is wrong. That's the big what if that I wanted to answer in in that story, and that's really what writing is all about: answering what if questions, especially mm. fiction writers. That's rather so. Inter- like, go ahead. I'm go sorry. on. No, go ahead. Um, the, the idea is that they develop this this implant. It's, they call it a code, hence the name of the story, and. Once it's installed, a person is no longer able to do anything that they know is wrong, deep, like in their subconscious, and that involves physically harming someone, unless it's extreme circumstances, or that involves verbally harming someone. You you can't even insult someone unless you know that they won't believe you. That sort of idea. Mm-hmm. And the question I have for you though is, what if there wasn't just a few of these people? What if there was thousands of them living in a society, everyone with one of these implants? What would that society look like? Would it be a place that you'd want to live? Because I would. Uh-huh. I mean, imagine 
a child being able to walk down the street in the middle of night completely alone in perfect safety because no one in that society would ever harm that child for any reason. Huh. Interesting. You would be able to trust every other person in this society with your life at all times. And that's, that's a powerful draw, in my opinion. Hmm. And it sounds like it as well, too. And uh, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Oof. Unfortunately, I can't really put a specific name to it. I suppose Tolkien would be the most influential, but that's just because he's so influential to so many people. Um, it's, it's all of the authors. There's hundreds of them with really gripping ideas and really compelling and believable stories and characters. I guess Tolkien is the one I'd have to put at the top of the list, but there are plenty on the list, so I do so hesitantly. Okay. Uh, that's, that's interesting. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Oof. Well, that comes in three, in my opinion. And the first one is to <laughs> any publishers or literary agents out there. The first bit of advice I have to give is entirely selfish. Um, read my work, please. <laughs> I mean, if you like it, then let me know, and I can send you more of it. And if you don't, that's fine, too. But uh, that's that's the self-plug. That's the self-aggrandizement that I'm not good at doing because, well, I'm a writer, not much of, not much of a self-publicist. But the second is to the readers in general, to the people out there who enjoy fantasy work. And that message is entirely about them you are being cheated out of some very incredible works by a lot of very talented authors and dedicated, especially like I consider myself to be dedicated and talented, but I'm not a very good judge of my own skills. But the system is such that if you want to get published, you have to get a literary agent, you have to get a publisher, or maybe a few dozen people will read it at most, all told. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, and they, go well, on. No, go on. I'm sorry. Well, they have such a backlog. Uh, they have such a massive pileup of people sending work to them for consideration, sending letters to them for, for uh, to be read and to be considered, that they could never possibly get to all of them, ever. And so most of them go unread. And it's a sad state of affairs. So my advice to the average reader is pretty simple. Don't just read what comes out in bookstores or what you find in, in ebook readers or in uh, what you can have to pay for, read outside the lines, if you'll pardon the pun. Read <laughs> uh, stuff that people put uh, on on series, on, on uh, websites, like Wattpad, for example. Um, I've gotten comments on my story on Wattpad, and I put it up there. And as far as I know, I, anywhere from... 10 people to 1,000 people could have read it for all I know, mm -hmm. but it's where you can get some really good fiction or you can, can get some really good science fiction or fantasy, some excellent work by a lot of excellent authors who would never get noticed otherwise. So if you're an average reader, don't just read from bookstores, branch out, read from fan fiction websites, uh, go to, uh, join up with uh, other avid readers, um, Wattpad, uh, Kindle readers, uh, Smashwords, uh, Draft to Digital, all of these websites have works that are put out by authors like me or writers like me who want to get eyes on their stuff but simply don't have the resources to get it published. And you can do them a favor by reading beyond what people would consider traditional reading. Huh. That's rather interesting. And lastly, at your request, if you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? Ooh. I, I would tell my younger writing self the same thing I would tell any other aspiring writer. Um, it's more important. It's it, it, Writing is important. It's arguably the most important thing that you can do, but it's not the only thing that you have to do. You have to network. You have to self-embellish. You have to advertise your work to other people. So when you're joining that writing group, you have to talk to your, your fellow writing group about what you're writing and what your motivations are and what your characters want and what your plots are and all that and get their input and use that input. You have to put your story up for other people to read as well on the aforementioned websites that I mentioned to the average reader, like Smashwords and draft to digital and Wattpad and the others. The, the point is that you have to send out query letters to literary agents. That's how you get their attention 
but don't put all your eggs in that basket because most of them aren't even being read. You have to get their attention in another way as well. Um, submit your work to writing contests. It's not like doing so will cost you much, if anything, and there's always a chance that you'll win one of those prizes and get a ton of attention on your work. Oh, nice. Uh, attend writing conferences. Uh, submit your work wherever you can. And the most important thing is to not be discouraged by defeat because you're going to be defeated a lot uh, before you ever get successful. And I know that from experience because I'm not successful yet. Right. And, of course, look at Dr. Seuss as well, too. He sent um, his first work to thousands and thousands and thousands of um, publishing companies. And then one of them finally said yes and took years. I mean, ended up being one of the um, best generation writers. I mean, that's one I could think of. It's like it's 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 probably outside your realm. But uh, Dr. Seuss, that was just a great story. No, no, I read Dr. Seuss just as much as you did. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't all West African kids' books. Right. And, yeah, uh, his story is typical. I mean, only the really rich and famous start out with that kind of a platform. The rest of us have to work for it. And if I had anything to say to myself as a younger person or to other aspiring writers, it's to be innovative in how you get yourself out there and to never give up because you're going to face a lot of defeat before you face success. Right. And that makes perfect sense, too. And once again, we're with uh, author Gabe Michelson here on the Mike Wagner Show. Gabe, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep yourself up to date. Love you back on 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh, check out your books or purchase them at? Uh, I'm sorry, was that a request for what I'm writing now, or was just, that just, it? Just just, uh, just tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact, and where can people check out your works? Um, the website will be posted uh, along with it, but right now it's getting published sucks, and once, that, once the website is up, there will be a link to the new site. But uh, currently, my sci-fi project is about aliens. Um, a, a, planet, a species that develops on another planet and never encounters Earth for or anyone from Earth for thousands of years, and they're plant-based. I mean, can you imagine what an alien species would look like if they came from plants mm -hmm. instead of instead of any kind of mammal? Right. I mean, they would be fundamentally different. So mm -hmm. I've had a lot of fun coming up with what their language and technology would look like. Um, and there are other irons in the fire, a lot of them, but uh, that's the one I've been focusing on more most recently. Okay. Well, that sounds really good. Once again, um, Gabe, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. And uh, you've been absolutely fantastic. And I wish you all success. You've been amazing. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for having me on. And I hope you have a great week. Hey, everybody. My name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and 
increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.